So folks, if there was an award for somebody who got exactly what they wanted and started regretting it immediately at world record speed, you would have to give it to none other than Mr. Kevin McCarthy. Because apparently, you know, he got exactly what he wanted. It took longer than he thought. It was a bit hairier than he thought. But he got the job he's been fighting for for years and years and years now. He reached the top of the mountain and it's already going to crap absolutely quickly and that's both for political reasons but also criminal and legal ones because we have to talk about three things here one we need to discuss the political side of this how in his desperation to get over the finish line he handed over the keys to the craziest members of an already extremist you know, pro-fascist GOP, giving the likes of Santos and Green and Bobert and all of them much more power than they ever deserve, and that's safe to give, and that's having political consequences. But then we have to focus in on Santos a little bit, because what we're learning is that both in a political especially, but even legal sense, Kevin McCarthy is complicit in the criminal lies and fraudulent lies of George Santos, and that he is all already wrapped up against his will in the looming criminal investigations into Santos in a pretty direct way. Let's start with the political side, because McCarthy understands that he's in a lose-lose situation, but he's got no other choice. And then you're going to have Republicans folding, just like the Wall Street Journal said. You know they will, especially the Republicans that got elected in Biden's district. So again, this is is all gesturing. This is all farce. But the problem is they could wreck the economy. They could they could cost three million job people to lose their jobs. They could cost people uh, billions of dollars in 401k accounts. Like this this is gesturing with a catastrophic price potentially. Right. And and of course part of the reason Joe's you just rattled off all the Democrats who uh, the power of Democrats in the Senate, uh, the, the White House controlled by Democrats. The other thing is that the, the person who thinks about this much the same way as all those Democrats is Mitch McConnell, who, who looks at all of this and thinks, you know, uh, the, the, not exactly the same way, but Mitch McConnell more or less is like, we're not going to default on, 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 our, on our debt. And so they have a powerful ally in McConnell, who uh, the, one of the great shows in Washington over the course of the next uh, however long Kevin McCarthy holds on to the speakership is going to be the interplay between McCarthy and and McConnell because the performance politics here, uh, Joe, in addition to crazy Republicans in the in the House who are performing mm -hmm. in order to raise money, the other performance politics here is, and this is a good toss to AB, who did an excellent piece about about McCarthy, is McCarthy's performance here. McCarthy knows how this is how what the end game here is, but he's so desperate, as we now have seen, you know, evidently over the course of the, the, this month of January, uh, to do anything anything that's required to, 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 to get and keep hold of the speakership, he now must enact this kind of uh, kamikaze politics, even if deep in his heart or in somewhere in the back of his head, he knows mm -hmm. how, what the end game here really is and what kind of damage would be done, not just to the country and the economy, but to the Republican Party if there were really a default. But he's going to play this game because he knows he has to appease the hardline caucus in in the among House Republicans. And so we're going to see that that is kabuki, but it's very dangerous kabuki theater. Uh, but that's what this is about, right? This is really now going to boil down to what Kevin McCarthy is willing to do and how close to the line he's willing to go uh, to keep hold, to keep those 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 people on board, those those far right Congress people on board uh, and not trying to, to, to vacate the, the his speakership and put that back up to right. another yet another vote. Yeah, and, 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 and John brings up a great point. You have Republicans also, whether you're talking about Mitch McConnell, whether you're talking about Republican donors, whether you're talking about small business owners, whether you're talking about big business owners, whether you're talking about anybody with a stake in the economy that's just not playing to the most extreme in the Republican base. You've got all of these people that want this crisis resolved. Right. They don't want it to become a crisis. And so the cards are all stacked against Kevin McCarthy on this kamikaze mission. It, it, will, it, it will not only uh, wreck the economy, it will also uh, it will be the final straw for, for, for people that are holding out hope that the Republican Party finally right. becomes a mainstream party. So this is just a lose-lose for McCarthy. And
So you can see that when it comes to a lot of the politics that the Republicans are trying to launch, like McCarthy, I don't think is, I don't think McCarthy is dumb. I actually don't. I don't know if he's a genius, but I don't think he's a dumb man. And I think he realizes that what he's being forced to do are enact the policies or at least enact the, the ability, you know, he's not going to get any of this passed with a Democratic White House and Senate, but try to enact the policies that were soundly rejected by the American people. Uh, on, 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 you know, LGBTQ issues and on women's rights and on the economy and on the culture wars and all of that. The voters, because again, even if they didn't love the Democrats said, I like them more than the Republicans. The Democrats are fine. The Republicans terrify me. So I'm not going to vote for them. McCarthy saw that and now has no choice but to give those people what they want on the debt ceiling stuff, which is going to just piss Americans off. Now, let's be clear, that's bad enough. But then we get into some George Santos stuff. Not only has a prosecutor come out and said, somebody who's worked as a prosecutor said that Kevin McCarthy is complicit in what George Santos is doing and has done, but also McCarthy said something very fascinating that puts a target right on his back. Listen to these two clips, but listen to what McCarthy says as well in particular. I never know all about his resume or not, but I always had a few questions about it. What about you, you the, the campaign pre pretending, pretending to be your chief of staff in his solicitation? You know, I didn't know about that. It happened, and I know um, they corrected, but I was not notified about that till uh, a later date. Did you speak to him about it at all? Yeah, I didn't know about it till a later date, though, unfortunately. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy there. Let me bring back in NBC's Ali Vitale on Capitol Hill. So interesting to hear the speaker say that he always had a few questions about Congressman Santos. The New York Times, of course, out with that investigation not long after um, the election, laying out all of the things that Santos said and did that turned out not to be true here. There are some new, um, n new things and dribs and drabs over like the last 48, 72 hours that have happened as it related to Santos, who is still insisting he will not resign, Ali. Yeah, Hallie, and I think that's been consistent with the Santos story is every day or two, it feels like you get another piece of information, whether it's where his campaign funding might have come from or other lies about his bio that he told to voters that are now coming out as untrue. So when you see Speaker McCarthy there saying, I always had a few questions, I think one of the natural questions that we might have for him and others in leadership are, OK, why did you have those questions and why weren't they asked before this person started running or even once they won, but before they were seated? <laughs> Nothing in life is free, Santa says, except maybe committee seats in the House of Representatives headed by Kevin McCarthy. Joining me now is Congressman Dan Bowman, Democrat of New York, who said today Kevin McCarthy appears to be complicit in a scheme to defraud the voters in George Santos's district. Congressman, good to have you on. Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think he's complicit? Well, the New York Times reported over the weekend, Chris, that McCarthy and his super PAC leader uh, were aware of a uh, self-research study that Santos commissioned to determine if he had any issues that might be leveraged by an opponent, which, not surprisingly, showed, showed up with uh, a bunch of lies, not nearly as many as we now know, but enough to recognize that Santos uh, appeared, at a minimum, to be trying to pull a fast one over his, his voters. That prompted his campaign team, many of them, to resign. And that is when Chairwoman Elise Stefanik, through a top political aide, and McCarthy's uh, super PAC helped Santos hire people who could deal with the uh, self-research that he had about all of his lies. McCarthy then confirmed yesterday that he did have questions about Santos's past during the campaign, which to me confirmed the reporting in The New York Times. He then, of course, as you pointed out, avoided questions about what he actually knew yesterday, pointing to a fake resume that Santos had given to the Nassau County Republican Party. Today, talking about the chief of staff impersonation, he has yet to address exactly what lies he knew. And the more that he goes on refusing to address this leads any logical, rational person to infer naturally that he knew a lot more that he is letting on and that he may have absolutely been complicit in Santos's web of deception. 
The Times article you're referring to, this one from Friday, Santos's lies were known to some well-connected Republicans. Uh, the reporting suggesting there was kind of whispers about it after this document was produced uh, that pointed to his oppo. This is a, I want to quote from a letter uh, that you and Representative Torres, also of New York, wrote to uh, McCarthy and Stefanik and a few others. In light of recent public reporting indicating each of you had at least some knowledge, the web lies used by Congressman George Santos to deceive his voters, we write to request you proactively and forthrightly cooperate with all current and future investigations Investigations, intermittent Sir Santos, including investigation by the House Committee on Ethics. Are you so you could see in that first part there, you see McCarthy say, I've always had suspicions or questions about Santos and his resume. I've always had suspicions and questions sort of as a way to say, look, I'm not an idiot. I understand that this is happening. You know, I wasn't necessarily blindsided and we're going to look into it. And, you know, he's going to face committees that, you know, we're going to put him on the ethics committee investigation and blah, blah, blah. But that's not good enough for a couple reasons. One, as noted in that second part, they are complicit. They know that this man was lying and lying to the voters and stealing money based on those lies, fraudulently getting donations, which benefits Santos. But also the way fundraising works is that fundraising by a local candidate helps the party as well. So in many ways, Kevin McCarthy and the, and the Republicans are a direct beneficiary of the fraudulent claims made by George Santos, complicit in that criminal activity for, you know, in, in all of that. Right. But but he admits it. He admits he had suspicions. He didn't say, I believe this young man. You know, I thought he was a bright young man and I believed him and I trusted him. And like you, he betrayed my trust and we're going to do what we can going forward. He admitted it on camera in 4K, guys, saying that I had suspicions, but he never acted on them. He had suspicions about Santos and his lies and never acted on it legally politically never did and maybe he'll do something now i doubt it maybe he'll do something now but after the fact and he got his speakership and he got that seat in a in a swing district he's complicit and so now whether kevin mccarthy ultimately goes down for this i think his speakership is already exploding imploding whatever you want to say collapsing the point is he's going to be a target in a santos investigation why didn't you do anything what did you know? You were benefiting from this. How are you going to rectify this? Did you at any point know Santos was telling lies that went from just dishonest to potentially criminal and did nothing about it? Were you covering it up until after the election in the hopes that it would go away or, you know, he would, you know, just be able to fly under the radar? These are questions McCarthy does not have an answer for. Or if he does, they're ones that puts him closer to an orange jumpsuit than he already was.